This video covers logging into the Baytech Prize Hub Live website. In order to gain access to the site, you'll need to have a Prize Hub with network access, the current version of software, and you'll need to have supplied the MAC address from the Prize Hub, which can be obtained by going through the touch panel, selecting the network settings, and grabbing that information from the bottom of the screen. Contact the Baytech Games Service Department and provide that MAC address along with a valid email address and they will enable your account. Once your account is enabled, you can navigate to live.baytechgames.com from any internet-enabled device, PCs, laptops, tablets, or mobile phones. You will enter the email address associated with your account. Please keep in mind that email address is case sensitive, so you'll need to use the same email address that was shared with you via the activation email and then enter your password which is also case sensitive if you forget what your password is you can click the forgot password link and instructions will be sent to you on how to reset your password once you click login you'll be taking it to the dashboard page which shows the machine status of all prize hubs associated with your account in my case I have many prize hubs showing up under machine status. Most of those are powered down right now. You can see they're showing a status of offline with the no, no network connection symbol. My main test unit has a green thumbs up which indicates that it is operational and communicating to the internet. Next I'll cover the users tab. When you initially create your account you will have just a single owner level login but from there you can create an unlimited number of accounts each with different access uh, levels to your machines and access to different machines. So if you have multiple prize hubs you can have users who only have access to the prize hubs that they are responsible for. In my case I'm going to go ahead and add a new user here Name him Robert Test. You'll need to use a valid email address because the user will need to confirm that email address in order to activate their account on Prize Hub Live. You'll want to give them a default password. And then you can use um, the phone number area if you want the user to be able to receive text messages. And at this point you click continue. It's a four step process. You select the machines that you want that user to have access to. In this case I'm just going to give them access to one. And then I need to select the level of access that I'd like Robert to have on this particular price hub. So if I select owner, you can see it says owners have full access to all menu functions. A tech will only have access to functions um, that do not include the password setup menu. So um, they won't be able to create or remove users or new machines. And then an employee will have limited access to stats, history, and ticket database menus. In this case, I'm going to set him up as a tech. We'll click continue. And then we configure the alerts for notifying Robert. And these will be either via email or text, depending upon what you select and how the user has been configured. So there are three different alerts you can select from. There's offline, locker vend, and low quantity. Offline means that the prize hub has stopped communicating to the Prize Hub Live website. Um, in that case, that's something we want to know about right away. I'm going to have that sent as a text. A locker vent, I also want to know about immediately. But low quantity, I just need him to be aware of that for the next time he takes a trip out to the location so that he knows uh, to bring a particular prize for, for refill. And then I click finish. And now that user has been created and they can log into the website as soon as they confirm their email address. Next I will discuss the reports tab. Under reports you can select a uh, date range going um, from the initial start date of your account being associated with Prize of Live um, up through the current date. So in this case I'm going to select for the past week. I'm going to select the machine that I want to generate the report for. And these can be multiple units, single units, all the units associated with your account. In this case I'm just going to do this single unit. I click the generate report button 
and now I get a report of the current stats on the prize hub. These are the same stats that you normally would have to travel out to the location to get from the face of the unit. I, I'll come back to the history tab in a minute. We we'll go to the events tab and that will show me basically the, uh, the inventory of the prize hub as it stands. So I can see the current number of events, the number of events since the last time that we filled the unit, and then um, of those units that we've, of those particular slots, uh, the inventory. So you can see that I'm full on the small capsules. Everything else has a quantity of zero. My lockers are all full except for position C6, um, and then the spindles as well. Uh, one thing I should point out is that in this particular example, I only have labels on a few of these fields. If you would like, you can enter um, descriptions for each one of these positions and then you'll see something that it, uh, includes the description of that prize and not just the location it's in. So in this case, uh, in a previous example, I set up small prize as A1, so that information will show up here. Under the failures tab, you will see if there have been any vend failures in that time period. And then the lifetime tab is just the, the lifetime of the unit itself. Under history, you can see the detailed log of all activity on the prize hub. This includes all sensor activity, uh, anytime that the menu, the operator menu has been accessed, anytime a customer scans tickets or adds tickets to the unit, as well as when prizes are dispensed. So if there's ever a question where you need to determine remotely if a prize hub is behaving properly or if there's a customer complaint about a prize not being vended, you can log in remotely and validate whether or not that the prize hub is functioning correctly. You can also download the reports directly by clicking the download link and you can print the report by clicking the print button. When you click the print button it will give you the option to print the entire report which includes all of the tabs listed there or just the current tab that you have selected. If I select current tab it will generate the, uh, the operating systems print dialog along with a print preview uh, with a header that includes the machine ID, the machine ID information um, and the, the current date range. Now we will cover the machine tab. From my dashboard status page I can click on the name of the machine that I want to learn more details about. I can see the MAC address, the uh, human friendly name that we've associated with that MAC address, so basically the ID, the address for the location of the device. Um, I can input a, a phone number for a contact at the location and I can enable and disable the alerts for that particular machine. Um, one other useful feature is setting up the hours of operation. If you know that your location is going to be closed every night at 10 p.m and you don't want to receive notifications from the unit after that, you could set these up to be closed time of 10 p.m. for each one. Um, and then of course the, the opening time, so if we open at 10 a.m., run 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., I'd, I'd want to do that for each one of these days. And then what that'll do is it'll prevent me from getting notifications um, at, during the off business hours. Next we'll go into the Diagnostics tab. This shows me um, at the current diagnostic state of the machine. None means that there isn't any current activity. I can do a test print, uh, which will force a, a test of the printer at the location. And then I can also test dispense a slot. So uh, let's say I have a customer on site who for some reason um, there's an issue and the, the prize from position B12 didn't get dispensed. Um, I can go in through my reports and verify in the, in the history report whether or not that, that is accurate, but I could um, force a dispense of a different product or even try to revend that particular product for that customer. So in this case I can select, let's say we're going to go with, with B13, I click Vend Test Slot and that will, you can see here machine updated successfully, vending B13. So now at the location, that prize is actually vending out of the machine. Now we're going to look at how to set up prizes for each of your machines. You'll log into Prize Hub Live, select the prize hub that you want to configure, 
click on the prizes tab and then you can see which hubs you have enabled. In this case I have a capsule hub, a locker hub, and a spindle. I'm going to take a look at my locker. I can expand that and look at the details of what we have available. I have gummy bears, bounce balls. You can see I haven't configured C3, 4, or 5 yet. If I click on edit, I can either select an existing photo or I can browse my hard drive for additional photos and images. In this case, just to save time, I'm going to, I'm going to select an existing photo and we're going to put a pop vinyl into position C3. I'm going to go back in and I'm actually going to label that as, uh, we'll say Funko Pop. That's only for reporting purposes. That does not change anything on the display of the, of the unit. I can then change the ticket value. We're going to say that that is 8,000 tickets. That does go live into the prize hub, and that is what the what will be shown to customers when they go to the shopping page. The quantity remaining, I am going to load that with four. My max quantity, I know I can get six of those into the machine. I want to be notified when we get to two or less in that machine, so I'll be notified via, via text or email when we reach that threshold. And then the slot status, I can either enable or disable um, prizes right from this location. The sale ticket value and sale duration in days, you can read more about in the manual. It's an opportunity to temporarily set a different price for, your, for that prize. I'm going to go ahead and save that slot. And now Funko Pop is listed there. My inventory is four of six. I can do the same thing for the other hubs. I'm going to expand my spindle hub here and you can see bounce balls, gold stars. I will edit position B3. I'm just going to change the price on that one real quickly to be 1500 tickets and now that's live in the machine as well. Um, let's go ahead and edit that with more detail. I will label that as gummy bears and I'm going to go ahead and change the image to match that as well. Those are updated. If I now go to my reports tab, select that machine and generate a report. If I go under Vens, you can see that the labels that I just applied now affect the reports. So each one of those values for B1, B2, B3 are here. Um, and as well as the inventory that I have updated to, to that particular location. Once you enter your initial quantities for what you have what you have physically in the prize hub, the prize hub will track the dispenses from that point forward. So if someone goes up to the machine and they purchased a gold star, uh, it will deduct that quantity and it'll be four of 10 and so on and so forth. Each time you uh, refill the prize hub, you will want to update your, your quantities. So we could do a stock reset all. And what that will do is go back and set all of the prizes back to the max quantities that you've originally entered into the prize hub. So you can see in this case, we're at 100 of 100, 10 of 10 on the gold stars. These other units I haven't configured, so they're all showing the zeros. Um, and that concludes the prize setup portion.